Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making mini ponchkis, my daughter's favorite. Very easy to make. Just take the ingredients out, mix it all up and fry it a minute on one side, a minute on the other side and you're done. The size is perfect if you have guests over. Just grab one, put it in the mouth and it's gone. Those are made with mascarpone cheese, so they're a little bit different texture than the regular Polish donuts that you know. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching. Mini donuts. I will need a package of mascarpone cheese and this one has about 220 grams and about one third of package of farmer's cheese and this one has about 210 grams. So all together you need 300 grams of cheese. Three egg yolks, two tablespoons of sugar and I have mixed regular sugar and vanilla sugar, three tablespoons of sour cream, 300 grams of all-purpose flour, which is about two and a half cups, half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda and shot of rum. And of course, powdered sugar on the end. And that's what I need for my delicious mini donuts. And why the shot of rum? So I can be a happy baker. Cheers. No, I'm joking. So the shot of rum prevents the donuts from getting oil into the dough. You don't want oily donuts. This one shot is not going to affect the taste of the dough, so you're not going to feel any alcohol in them. But the alcohol content prevents the oil from getting into your donuts, so your donuts are not oily after frying. And also, that's why there is so little sugar. When you have too much sugar in, in the dough and you fry it in uh, hot oil, then your donuts would burn. So the amount of sugar inside is just enough to give a little sweetness, but on the end, you will put powdered sugar on them and you won't need any more. My daughter loves them. So when she comes back from school, I know the first thing she's going to be, Mama, I smell donuts. It's going to be hard to feed them dinner before they actually grab those donuts. I have put half a teaspoon of salt in my flour. So the eggs and the mascarpone cheese and about one third less than a half of that farmer's cheese. Three tablespoons of sour cream and now half a spoon of baking powder and half a spoon of baking soda. Your dough will be gooey because of that cheese. And my two tablespoons of sugar. And on the end, I will put that shot of rum. And mix it until all your ingredients are nicely incorporated. I will use the spout of a couple minutes and finish with my hands. Your dough will be gooey and sticky. That's how it should be. You do not have to wait. Once it's mixed well, kneel of flour on your board, roll it out, and you can fry them right away. So my oil is preheating right now. Flatten it a little bit and I gotta get my roller. I'm aiming to roll it out about half an inch. You can, you can use regular roller. I actually bought a roller on Amazon that has attachments and it tells me exactly how thick my dough will be. That will be about half an inch of thickness. And with that attachment, I don't have to worry if my dough is even in every corner. So just roll it out and Usually I cut circles out, but I know my daughter loves the heart, so I'm going to use her heart that she plays with when she rolls out dough with me sometimes and create hearts for her. But the diameter is about two inches. Those cute little hearts. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm gonna dip it in flour as it's getting sticky. And the leftover, I will have to roll it again. And here you can see how thick I have it. So my oil is almost ready at 175 and I want to keep it between 175 and 180. I don't want it to go lower as if the oil is not hard enough, well the chances are the oil will get inside your donuts and you will have oily donuts. So it is very helpful to have thermometer for that oil, so you know. And I do not want to go above 180 as, you know, tiny pieces will just uh, burn. So between 175, 180, it is a perfect temperature for those donuts. And as far as the dish that I have, it helps the donuts, the oil, to drip down so that's why paper towel is a good thing to have and a little bit longer tweezers. So when you take them out, you don't lean too close to that hot oil at 350. It's a danger zone. You don't want it to go anywhere around your face. And I think we are ready to fry them. I just realized that I should mention one detail. The first time I, I put them in oil, I want 180. Because when you put your dough inside that oil, the oil temperature will drop down a little bit. So wait until 180, you will put your donuts in and it will drop down to 175, which is perfect. I just remembered. And I will come closer with the camera so you can see. My pad is pretty big, but I still don't want to overcrowd them. With this big pad, I will fry them twice. Half now and half in a little bit. And as you can see, some of them actually turned around by themselves. And when do you know when they are ready? When they are the same color brown color on both sides then you can take them out and these are baby ponchkis as my daughter calls them she is going to be so excited when she comes back home and now the other half And again, not all of them require my help as they turned around by themselves, but there is always a couple that need help. And it takes about a minute on one side, so pretty quick. My oil is darker, but this morning I was making the big donuts. I had fresh oil this morning, but after 40 of those and now the mini ponchkis, I will have to get brand new oil. But it's worth it. Those are delicious. I've got about 50 donuts from this recipe. Smachnego, everyone. Okay, a little bit of powdered sugar and those are ready to eat. Oh, the day's so good. Oh, one more. Uh-oh. I would like to let you know why I am a big fan of using scale instead of the cups. I do put measurements in cups so it's easier. As you know, I'm from Europe, so everything for me is in grams. 
and here in United States, any recipes you have is usually in cups. But I want you to pay attention to one thing. So take it as a tip. I learned by mistakes because I've done it before. So I have put together a flour, the same flour, all purpose flour, into the same measuring cups. Exactly two cups in here and exactly two cups in here. But I want to measure it using the scale and show you if there is a difference and how much of a difference it can be. So here is the first two cups of flour, as you can see, two cups. And here is exactly two cups all around. No cheating. And I will turn on and there's nothing here. My scale, so it's set to zero. Maybe I should show you. So it's set to zero. If you can see, Okay, and I will put the first two cups in. And it says it is 248 grams. So now I will take this into a different cup and it's empty, put it back, it comes back to zero. And now the other two cups, all of it. And this one is 3.14. So now you can see that uh, two cups are not created equal, right? They do not measure on a scale the same. So why is that? Well, it's all about handling the flour. If we are gentle with it, the flour is fluffy, it's light, and then two cups, nice fluffy flour. If you handle the flour, shake it, kind of bang it, you know, on the uh, surface somewhere. You know, it loses its volume because it becomes dense. So you keep adding to have exactly two cups, right? Well, but it's much, much more heavier. It's much, much more flour that you need. So if you ever had a cake and you tried to follow the measurements and directions and the cake wasn't quite the way you hoped, it wasn't as fluffy, it wasn't as delicate, it wasn't as soft. Well, maybe because there was too much flour. So it's just a tip and I hope uh, you will find it helpful to kind of pay attention to how we handle flowers. I know how it is when you bake something and you put your you know, heart into it, time into it, and then it doesn't come out the way you hope for. And it's frustrating. So I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.